Rap can be a negative and sometimes violent genre, but not too often is it considered particularly dark. However, Memphis rap is known for being one of the darkest genres of rap ever. From satanic themes to very violent lyrics, Memphis rap is extremely raw and gritty. More specifically, Memphis rap sigils are theorized to be evil songs that sample real murders and contain some sort of demonic energy. There are thought to be eight of these Memphis rap sigils in existence, with some people speculating that the real sigils only exist in cassette form. But to understand what these Memphis rap sigils even are, we must first understand what Memphis rap is. Also, I know Tub and others have covered these sigils on YouTube and other areas of the internet, but I wanted to go a bit deeper and look into these sigils a bit more than I've seen other people do and learn a bit more about Memphis rap as well. So let's look into it. So Memphis rap is based out of Memphis, Tennessee, which is known for being very violent. It's also thought to have many ties to occultism and supernatural beliefs. It began in the early 90s with DJ Spanish Fly, who is often referred to as the godfather of the genre, as he was the bridge between 1980s electro funk and the heavier gangster rap of the following decade. DJ Squeaky was the next to advance the sound of Memphis rap and was one of the first prominent producers in the game. Other popular artists from the genre were Triple Six Mafia, Gangsta Pat, Tommy Wright III, and more. Tommy Wright in particular is a pioneer of this sound and is very important to remember throughout this video. He is easily one of the best and the most recognizable producers from this area, who's inspired many people that came after him. When the Memphis scene began, Southern rap wasn't nearly as popular as West or East Coast or other genres of rap, so they didn't really get much help from labels. For that reason, everything was do-it-yourself, making the quality of the music a lot jankier. I don't know if that's a word, but I'm just... I'm just gonna say it. you guys know what I mean. They produced and recorded with pretty low-tech rigs, making the sound more distorted. They also used to pass out cassettes rather than CDs or vinyl since they were cheaper, again lowering the sound quality. Some of these cassettes can even be found on Discogs to this day. When it comes to the sound of Memphis rap, it's very recognizable. Memphis rap has probably influenced some of your favorite artists or genres and you didn't even realize it. Many prominent qualities include its triplet flows, the cowbells, the repetitive vocals, the vocal samples, and lots of distortion. It's responsible for many other sounds we hear today, such as cloud rap, funk, and many other underground genres. It was also often very eerie sounding because of the lack of production quality and the eerie melodies that they would use. They often sampled sounds from movies, occasionally horror movies, and also resampled many other Memphis rap songs. Resampling was very common in Memphis rap, and interestingly enough, many Memphis rap songs are still resampled to this day by newer artists. When I was researching these albums for these videos, I probably listened to like 10 of them, and there were so many songs that I was like, oh, this was sampled by this person, or this was sampled by Denzel Curry, or this was sampled by Suicide Boys, also Duke Deuce, Isaiah shot. There are so many songs that I recognize from samples that I've heard more recently. Another main feature of Memphis rap is how dark the lyrics are. Tommy Wright III says that people call it dark or horrorcore, but from his perspective, it was just reality. Memphis rappers were just talking about what was going on. Lyrics were often about the violence in the area, murders, drugs, and even Satanism. Although these satanic lyrics weren't inherently about worshiping Satan, as I've covered in other videos, but they are meant to be symbolic, as stated by many of the artists themselves. It's not devil worshiping, but it's a lot of evil shit. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of evil spirits. Cutthroat city, cutthroat mentality. That's what Memphis is about. So we understand a little bit about Memphis rap, and we understand that it's pretty dark both lyrically and sonically, so it's surprising that it can get any darker, but it supposedly does. Memphis rap sigils are an urban legend spawned on the internet that has never been confirmed true. First of all, a sigil is a seal, sign, or symbol that is believed to have some sort of magical power. The rumors began in 2017 with people on the internet asking what Memphis rap sigils were, with others replying with ideas of what they thought it was. In late 2017, one of the first understandings of what a Memphis rap sigil was emerged. So the idea was that these rappers and producers would commit murder and capture the soul energy from the location the murder took place, and somehow the magnetic taping of the cassettes would trap the soul energy. I know it sounds pretty ridiculous. Another person in an online forum around the same time suggested that Memphis rap sigils refer to eight albums that have mysterious properties imbued into them via horrorcore Memphis hip-hop. This is the next common understanding of Memphis rap sigils is that there are eight specific albums. And if you know anything about these supposed sigils, apparently there's a recipe that you can use to make these sigils, and you've probably heard it either on TikTok or YouTube or Reddit online, but essentially the recipe is to murder someone, record it, sample it, return to the murder scene, rap over the beat, put it on a mixtape, thus creating the the sigil, sell the mixtape, people listening to it charges it, there's a bunch of question marks, and then profit. I'm gonna touch on the recipe a little bit more after I talk about the individual albums and sigils, but from first glance, it's pretty obvious that it doesn't seem too realistic. Another online forum user suggests that 36 Mafia's name is a direct reference to what happened, although they claim that their name is just them playing characters. They also say that 36 Mafia fell off, which is just wrong, but I wanted to learn more, so I decided to listen to each of the eight albums that they claim are sigils, so let's check them out. The first one is Lil Ramsey. 
Ramsey going undercover. And it's actually a solid tape, and Tommy Wright, who I mentioned earlier, is the producer. It also features Project Pimp, who was in 10 Wanted Men, which is a group that'll come up later. DJ Paul from 36 Mafia also supposedly helped produce the first track. There's pretty much no information of Lil Ramsey on the internet. All we know is that he passed away, and nothing about this project is particularly eerie or sigil related in any way. The next sigil is Maniac, The World of a Psycho, and nothing is really known at all about Maniac or this album. We only have this one picture of Maniac, and the album itself is very low quality, except it does have some really cool instrumentals. I wish we knew who produced it, but no one has any idea, at least from what I've seen. And some songs, like Hellraiser in particular, are kind of eerie, but none of them, again, remind me of anything sigil related, or really talk about murder in depth, or sample murder, or anything like that. The third sigil is Hall of Hell Living in a Casket, and this album is one of the best quality and best produced so-called sigils. As opposed to the other tapes, it's heavily influenced by West Coast rap, and has a little bit of Memphis rap in there, but it's mostly West Coast from what I heard. Honestly, out of all the supposed sigils, this is probably the best project, at least when it comes to quality. I really enjoyed listening to this one. The song Blow It Out is actually super good, so if you want to check that out, I highly recommend it. A YouTube comment from William Payne, who's the producer of the album, says that most members became entrepreneurs and are doing well. He says, the music was raw and true, written based on the time and not today's time. So again, this album doesn't really remind me of anything sigil-like. In my opinion, it's not really creepy at all, and I definitely didn't hear any samples of murder. The next supposed sigil is Psycho, The Return of Psycho. Again, not much is known about Psycho, but he did make an album a couple years later with a group by the name of Charge Partners, which could be a reference to sigils charging. Probably not. It also had a little bit of a mix of some West Coast funk in it, and today Psycho is supposedly doing well as he is no longer rapping. The fifth so-called sigil is Children of the Corn, the single. Children of the Corn don't have much information on them, except they were also known as Graveyard Productions. This one is definitely the lowest quality and the creepiest out of all the sigils. If I had to pick anyone to be real, it would definitely be this one because it did sound really eerie listening to it, especially that first track and a few of the others. But it's actually been debunked that a lot of the screams and creepy sounds from this project have been sampled from sound effect records. So again, it's not likely that there were actually any real murders that were sampled on this album. The sixth supposed sigil is 19 Tiny 5 by Mr. Tiny Mane. Again, not much is known about this project. Supposedly, it was produced by DJ Zerk, who was another popular producer in the Memphis area. Tiny Mane also collaborated with other popular Memphis artists like Tommy Wright and DJ Squeaky. Honestly, I really liked his flow in particular on this project. I think it was very ahead of its time. And again, it had the normal Memphis rap sound, but nothing was especially eerie about this project, and definitely nothing sigil related was on it. The seventh sigil is Friends of Destruction in their self-titled album. Not much is known about this project, again, like most of the other projects. Again, it was produced by Tommy Wright, and it has some really good instrumentals, in my opinion. Tommy Wright was in this group as well, and it was the only project he made with this group before he was incarcerated. I actually really enjoyed this project, too. I think it's really good and worth a listen. Although there was nothing sigil-like on this album, it was just, again, the more typical Memphis rap style. The final sigil is Wanted Dead or Alive by Ten Wanted Men. Ten Wanted Men was formed by Tommy Wright, and is a group that he still reps to this day. Lil Ram Ramsey is also a member of the group who is the creator of the first sigil that I talked about. This album features the song Four Corners Part 3, which is a series in Tommy's music where he references a place he used to hang out called the Four Corners. People like to connect somehow Tommy's repping of the Four Corners with some conspiracy theory that they summon the god from the fourth corner, although there is zero evidence for this at all. Other than that though, nothing about this entire project really gave any sigil vibes. Honestly, none of these projects are any darker than some old Eminem song or maybe an old Tyler the Creator song. Honestly, Honestly, some of their songs might be darker than these sigils. These just seem to be regular Memphis rap albums, and all the sigil talk is pretty much just speculation with no evidence. I couldn't really find any info about any of these artists, and I was thinking maybe if these sigils were real, we would see an article related to them about murder, although that never happened. So I doubt any of these people were actually killers who were sampling their own murders. So maybe you need the cassettes to actually hear or feel the sigil, I'm not sure. I'm guessing the majority of the people that are spreading these rumors about sigils haven't actually listened to the albums or any of these songs, because had they done that, they would have realized that there are literally no murder samples in any of these projects, and many of them aren't even that creepy. And if nothing else, making this video has given me a huge appreciation for Memphis rap in general, since I wasn't very educated on it, and I really had no idea how influential and important it was. Out of the supposed sigils, I actually really enjoyed Friends of Destruction, Living in a Casket, and The Return of Psycho. So if you want to check any of these out, I highly recommend it. Don't worry, you're probably not charging a sigil. If you want to learn about a rap song that actually samples a real murder, check out my video about some of the most disturbing and dark rap songs I have ever heard. Other than that though, thank you guys for watching. My name is Many Balls and I'll see you guys next time. My wrist just cracked when I when I did that. ASMR.